We're getting a pretty unexpected debut from the Marlins' Yuri Perez. I like to call him the Skyscraper. He's got some absolutely banana stuff, funky mechanics, really tall dude. And I got a chance to take a look at some of his AA data, so let's dig into it. Here's his mix at double A this year. I have him at four pitches, fastball 96, 97, touches 99, cutters 86 to 87 can get up to 89. His changeup is that classic Marlins power changeup at 89 to 90, up to 91 at times. And then he's got a slider that's kind of a sweeper. He can lengthen it out at times. It's 80 to 81, up to 83 to 84 when it's a little bit shorter. His usage on those pitches is about 44% fastball, 27% cutter, 15% of that slider, and 14% of that changeup. Righties primarily are getting the combination of breaking balls alongside the fastball, and lefties is where you're gonna see that changeup usage jump above 20% and be his primary secondary offering. Let's start with the fastball. The oddity is that Yuri Perez is six foot eight with six foot seven extension down the mound, and his release height's only around six feet, which is right around the league average, although obviously he is much taller than league average. The extension there too is also pretty strong. That's like 80th percentile in Major League Baseball for four seam fastballs. But he actually has a pretty sidearm release, which from his height causes that release height or where he's releasing the pitch to be a little bit lower and not really stand out as, as being too high. No, something you'd expect from a guy like Andrew Painter, who's really tall, is a tall release. And Painter is obviously well above six feet in his release height, which is understandable. But Yuri creates kind of an odd visual as a pitcher because he is so huge. And yet you're not getting cra crazy downhill plane with anything he's throwing. For reference, Zach Gallen is six foot two and has a six foot release. Spencer Strider is six foot and has a six foot release. And Yuri Perez is six foot eight and has that same six foot release. But the shape data on his fastball is pretty great. He has 19 inches of vertical break, or what's often called carry. It's about three inches more than you normally expect from that six foot release. Driveline Baseball Stuff Plus model has it as a 137, which is a really strong fastball grade, about 37% above the average four seamer. It generated pretty strong swing and miss rates too, around 30% at double A. 22% is the average for four seamers in the majors. But this fastball actually did get barreled a little bit. The x woba the underlying kind of weighted on base average of the pitch, including launch angle and exit velocity as well as sprint speed for hitters, was actually all the way up at 477. Something in the low 300s is kind of what you'd want to expect there. So looking at this, it's kind of almost was an all or nothing pitch for him for most of the year at AA. Now as to why it kind of got barreled at AA, I'm not entirely sure. It's a deceptive release. It has good underlying shape and yet it did get hit a bit. It could just be a location thing. He was pounding the zone with this. It was in zone about 60% of the time at AA. So my guess is that he was kind of letting it eat middle more often than you normally expect. And although the shape is good enough, I think for him to pretty much let it eat middle, potentially there might have been some leak of the pitch maybe down into the zone, too much over the heart of the zone. So I would imagine if he could clean up the fastball location, that something like the x over here would maybe come down. He pitches to the edges a little bit more. But I will admit, it. it that x but does give me a little bit of pause in submitting a 137 so a stuff plus grade on the pitch where I'm that confident it is that big above the major league average fastball. I think maybe it plays down slightly. Um, so I'm kind of reserving my final verdict on the fastball until we get some better information at the major league level. Yuri's cutter is actually the secondary pitch that he throws the most. And it's my understanding that this pitch is a new one relatively. He developed it last year sometime. It wasn't always something he threw. It has seven inches of vertical break to it. And it actually has one inch of arm side movement. You generally expect most cutters to pick up glove side movement. So moving away from a right-handed hitter, this pitch kind of actually tails a little back, bit back into a right-handed hitter. And you're usually expecting about one to two inches of that glove side movement as opposed to any arm side movement. Now this is an average of his total movement. So there is probably a large chunk of the time where this pitch is picking up more of that glove side cut. And I would guess that's when it's inside to lefties or away from righties, which I wouldn't be surprised if that is where the pitch works best from a stuff plus perspective. The way I think about most cutters is just that as the velocity decreases, the more glove side movement you need for a stuff model to like it. And the harder you throw it again, say 90 plus, the more that pure backspin of velocity will help it generate width. But again, the more, more vertical you're getting, the less of that glove side cut, the, the more it becomes kind of a weak contact inducer. Whereas if you get into slider territory, where maybe it has four or five inches of that glove side cut, it'll, it'll grade out pretty well. So because of this, Yuri's cutter doesn't really pop on any stuff plus model from driveline baseball's model, the pretty basic one that just includes some velocity and release characteristics. 
as well as movement of the pitch, it gets an 86. So it's saying it's a below average pitch. The stuff model wants more of that drop, wants more velocity, wants more cut to get it to average, and Yuri's pitch doesn't have that. But the big caveat here is that Yuri's results on this pitch have been fantastic at AA. He's generating a 45% swing and miss on the pitch, which is well above the 30% as you normally expect for any kind of breaking ball in this area. And the X-Woba is fantastic on it. It's a 136 this year. So even when there is contact on it, it's not doing any damage. As to why it's outperforming a stuff model, I think for the most part, what a stuff model is going to miss with a guy like Yuri Perez is his limbs and his height and his release. Stuff models are generally comping to pitch shapes that have occurred in the past, right? We're looking historically at how these pitches have performed based on velocity, movement, release, and getting to some result. I don't think what it's factoring in with a guy like Yuri Perez, especially with that average six foot release height, is everything that's going on on his body. He's six foot eight, he's a really tall guy, he's lanky. There's some deception in the delivery. It's sidearm from a really high height. It's funky. There's a lot of funk to it. And I don't think something like Stuff Plus is going to pick up everything. I think it's a good base to go off of. So I think looking at the results on the cutter are really important. Understand that he's generating a ton of swing and miss on this pitch, despite Stuff Plus thinking that this is a below average pitch, which is the model that's going to value whiffs the most. So again, some hesitation on what Stuff is saying about this pitch, but the performance on it's been unreal. It's the primary breaking ball he goes to. I'd be stunned if this is not an above average pitch. Yuri's changeup is of the classic Marlins power changeup variety, just like Sandy Alcantara, Edward Cabrera, and Sixto Sanchez. It's 89 to 90 miles per hour on average, and it has 12 inches of vertical movement with 14 inches of arm side movement. So it's really on the border of sinker territory. Changeups are generally around kind of the six to eight inch of vertical movement territory, depending on the arm angle. But the Marlins live in their own very successful world with these unique changeups. My perception of how to talk about changeups connects to the four seam fastball. As I always say, we're most often looking for a drop difference between that changeup and four seam and not a massive uh, velocity difference between the four seam and the changeup. That's what's gonna historically result in the best changeups. Um, but we also have to consider things like velocity differential, like the Zach Granke changeup is one that's really just separating on velocity, not really dropping a ton more. And horizontal break is another way to get to it as well. If you have kind of a cut right fastball, if you can create some fade and arm side run on a changeup, that's also going to work. But for the Marlins power changeups, it doesn't really seem like they care about those variables. If I had to guess what they care about, I, I think they care about location maybe more than anything, which is something that I believe I've heard at least that location on changeups generally correlates to success on the pitch better than something like stuff plus. So maybe that's a, a nuance of stuff plus that they're never gonna be able to kind of wrap their head around just because there's maybe so many variables that go into it. And I think the Marlins also prioritize the sell of the pitch at how the pitcher looks throwing it, which is something that's anecdotal and visual, but I do think it matters. I've heard it from players and coaches a ton on the pitch. Can the guy's arm action match the fastball speed? Is there something visually there occurring where the hitter can pick it up? But regardless, the Marlins have had success with this. I don't entirely know why. I imagine they have a couple coaches there that just have a really good understanding. Um, the other theory that I actually really like is that they just are able to identify the pitchers, you know, that can throw these pitches and then give them to them, as opposed to maybe taking a guy who's never been able to throw a changeup again to have a good changeup. So maybe they're in their own narrow field of success, but it's worked out for them. So it's, it's really hard to critique it. Yuri's changeup is only about six or seven miles per hour slower than his fastball. And it only has seven inches of vertical separation and only four inches of horizontal separation. But again, we're gonna throw away this 71 stuff plus that driveline baseball gives it um, to some extent, just because this thing is generated a 56% swing and a miss percentage at double A, and the x wob is once again below 200, which is exceptional. Again, there's a lot of whiffs here, and when there is contact, it is not productive contact. This is at least an average changeup to me in the majors, and I'd be surprised if it performs worse, even if Stuff Plus is a little bit skeptical of it. Yuri also throws a semi-sweepy slider. This pitch has zero inches of vertical break and nine inches of sweep at 81 miles per hour. Generally, sweepers are gonna perform best over like 12 inches of horizontal movement of that glove side sweep cut away from a right-handed hitter. And Yuri has a few of them that do get out to that distance, and that's maybe when the velocity ticks down a little bit. But again, we're looking at averages on the entire pitch type here, and it's usually under that 12 inch of sweep threshold. Stuff Plus is generally going to try to maximize swing and miss. That's what is gonna allow something to have a really strong Stuff Plus score. And that's because whiffs are one of the most predictive singular outcomes you can have as a pitcher. So the question is just whether if a pitcher can land something more consistently with slightly less movement or maybe slightly less velocity, it's really interesting to consider whether that offering might be a better one for the pitcher to throw, even if Stuff Plus is saying that it, that is not the case. This is an interesting debate. I think I lean towards the Stuff Plus side most of the time because I, I'm a little bit skeptical that command is something that really can be taught really consistently well. 
So it, I would imagine that if you just drop the stuff plus the pitcher is going to retain the same command. And then at that point, you'd rather just have the better pitch. But with Yuri's sweepy slider, driveline stuff plus says this is around a league average breaking ball at 102. That's okay, I think. Yuri also locates this pitch in the zone about 40% of the time, which is a bit below average for any kind of slider. So command maybe isn't great on the pitch, but I, I think that's okay. Again, we're looking at a third secondary now that gets an incredibly strong 60% swing and miss on this pitch. And the x wob again is below 200. Once again, we have whiffs and we have soft contact when there is contact. And I, looking at how he's using this pitch and how much it's out of zone, I really think this is kind of a two strike chase option to righties that again, if contact is made on it, it's not really gonna allow any damage. So it's a good piece of the repertoire. I do think it fills it out. Whether it's a pitch that he should be throwing more is one that's utilized ever above 20% of the time. I'm not entirely sure. I guess we kind of have to wait and see how the major league command looks on it. For me with Yuri, it's hard to see anything lower than kind of four average major league pitches, honestly. Um, if you go to three major league average pitches, then you're kind of taking that sweepier slider and saying that's more of a peripheral option. But still, we have three, I think, major league or average or better pitches. The fastball is good, the cutter is good, and the changeup is really good as well. Again, we're looking at some weird things with the fastball in double A, right? We have a weird expo Woba with it, despite pretty strong swing and miss. So I'm curious to see if that is consistent at the major league level and whether that pitch gets up. I do think there's a chance he comes up and has a couple starts where he's a bit fastball heavy, and that pitch does get touched up a little bit based on how it performed on batted ball outcomes at double A. But I think over time, if you can kind of bounce out the repertoire and go, you know, 30%, or let's say 40% fastball, 30% of the cutter, and maybe 30% of the changeup, and has this slider as more of a peripheral option to righty specifically, he can really jump into a repertoire mix that I think is pretty fascinating. And I also think, again, if the stuff plus is a little underwhelming, I, I'm very curious as to whether that is simply because we're comping things with stuff plus, and Yuri's a huge dude with a pretty average release. So if you're not factoring in any of the biomechanic characteristics into a stuff plus model on him, I do think you're missing a piece of the puzzle. And we see these really, really strong whiff results on his pitches. We have three pitches above 40%. It's just absolutely insane. And I think that at the end of the day is maybe gonna translate a little bit better than a general stuff model saying that, oh, based on this release and these characteristics, we're not considering his height, we're not considering any of the deception, that if these th we think these are more average. So. This is gonna be a really fun debut. Uh, the guys jumping up from double A, I think always have a little bit more mystique around them. We saw Yuri in the Futures game. I think he's gonna shove. I think this is one of the better arms to come up the entirety of this season. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy his debut.